Hello, avid readers, book nerds, or casual observers. Welcome to the Read Along, brought to you by the Lit Round Table. I'm Anna. And I'm Joseph. And today we'll be discussing the prologue through Chapter 5 of mm-hmm. The Dragons of Autumn Twilight, the first Dragonlance novel by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. Awesome. Weiss or Weiss? I don't know. We were discussing this before we started recording. <laughs> Is it Margaret Weiss or Margaret Weiss? W E I S. I think I've always said Weiss, but I but that's like my middle school brain. I said that's Weiss like hanging on, so I don't know. I said Weiss because my German pronunciation kicked in at the last second. Well, I think you're probably more accurate than my middle school yeah. brain. <laughs> Eh. Ever was. <laughs> but, I don't know. You're a pretty smart middle schooler. Well, thank you. Thank All right. You. So I said prologue through chapter five, but it's not really, it doesn't say it's a prologue, but it's kind of a prologue. It's an unlabeled prologue. Yeah. Um, so this book has multiple books in it. It's kind of like the Lord of the, Ring, the Lord of the Rings that way. Right. Um, but yeah, so it starts with the Canticle of the Dragon, which is a poem. And then there's like a little mini section called The Old Man. Which is what I refer to as the prologue. Yeah. And then there's book one in chapters one through five. Because it's the first piece of the narrative that we are given. Yeah. And it's important. It's an important piece of the narrative, as it turns out. Yep. So, yeah. So what did you think? I mean, I've technically read this before. Right, you have. So I couldn't help... But try to guess everyone's character class. <laughs> right. <laughs> because I know this is a D and D novel. I'm like, okay, so we've got we've got the dwarf. I'm uh I mean tanky character, most likely. Mm-hmm. I prob not like a barbarian, but like dwarf uh warrior that's proficient in like smithing because he Flint. was a metal worker. And then we've got the half elf Tannis. Who I think is a ranger. Because he has a bow and arrow later on. Mm-hmm. I think he's probably a ranger. I don't know how, outdoor, how outdoorsy he is. We don't know a ton about like his skill set yet. Other than he's a half elf. And he's a, kind of a leader. Yeah, with a beard. Mm-hmm. He's kind of angsty. Not as angsty as our wizard friend. Yeah. W- yeah. Graceland is angst embodied. Is he a wizard or like a sorcerer? Or did, did they label him wizard? Because those are two different things in D and D. He's know. a magician. Sorry. Okay. Well, I don't know. I am mag- not a D and D aficionado. Yeah, it's fine. I'm not. I've never played. I just know things from Critical Role. Yeah. Um. Or maybe he's a warlock. No, he's not. Unless he has like a higher power that he serves that gives him his powers. Maybe he does. If he if he does serve a like. A, a higher being that is giving him these powers and also screwing him up, then he's totally a warlock. But anyway, his brother's a warrior, and then we've got two barbarians, and mm-hmm. I think, okay, um, Sturm? Stern? Stern is... So when he was introduced again, I was like... Oh, it's Sturm. Sturm, M&M. yeah. Um, I was like... Oh, yeah, it's the old guy. And then, like, they were talking about him later, and I was like, he's not as old as I was imagining him. He's he a younger, old. He's a younger person than I thought he was. Yeah. But he ha- he's very, like, old school. Paladin. Totally paladin. Yes. Yes. Um, he's a Solamnic knight. Yeah. I took notes on the characters, because I was like, the hardest thing for me is going to be keeping track of all these mm-hmm. names as we go through this. And then there's Tasselhoff. Who I just love. Yep. He's he's wonderful. Mm-hmm. And he's the rogue, obviously. Yeah. The pickpockety rogue. The thief. Yes. The kender. That's what they're called. Yeah. Um, well, we also have... Um, well, they mentioned Kitiara. Who did not show up for their meeting. But she should have. And she's a mercenary, so I'm thinking she's also a fighter. Mm-hmm. Um, Raceland's brother's name is Karaman. Caramon. Yep. And he's a fighter too. He's a warrior. Yeah. Big warrior. Big man. Um, and our barbarians' names are Gold Moon and River Wind. Indeed. So I was so I really liked getting introduced to the cast. Mm-hmm. That was fun. Um I and I like I like the way they interact as a big group. I was like, because on the cover you only see three characters, right? You only see, I'm assuming Flint 
And no. Oh yeah, no, the dwarf is definitely Flint. And sorry, the main guy. Tannis. Tannis, and Goldmoon. Goldmoon, the barbarian girl, holding the staff. I'm assuming is what she's holding the yeah. magical staff that everyone's after. Um, yes. And so I was like, if this is only Tannis and Flint and this mystery girl. I don't like I I'm okay with the Tannis and Flint interactions, but I've I'm hoping there's more. And then we got introduced to like five or six other people that are in this group and I was yeah. like, Oh thank goodness. This is gonna add a lot more flavor and depth to this oh, yeah. to this dynamic. <laughs> so I really I'm really digging all of the different character quirks. Like they've all got their thing, you know. Like yeah. the night the night guy is wearing ancient armor and has an ancient sword that were like his dad's and his whole thing is finding his dad and yeah. he's got a big mustache mm-hmm. and there's like the crazy wizard with hourglass pupils. So, oh, okay. So speaking of Raceland and his strange eyes. Um, so like, this was the first Dragonlance book that I read, but I've also read, um, there's a, a trilogy like that it involves one of the titles is like, the time of the twins and then there's the test of the twins, whatever. And it's all hmm. about Raceland and Caraman. Oh, cool. Um, and I can't remember, or I don't know that I ever knew like what order it happens in. Like, mm. I don't know if those books are technically set before this one, even though this one was the first one. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm like trying to remember <laughs> what happened in those books. And if this is like, after that or before it and i just cannot remember and it's driving me absolutely crazy Mm -hmm. but it makes me want to go find those books and buy them too i never intended to have a dragonlance like collection that i owned um but it may happen yeah inadvertently why not i I don't know (laughs) but i mean i don't have a reason for it to not but yeah it's just funny um what i was going to say though is it, it feels it almost feels like all of these characters were created like, um, it, they all feel very much like player characters. Yeah. Where, like, it almost feels like a different person came up with each of these characters, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Even if that's not the case. Yeah, um, I don't know, um, the origin of, like, how this came about. Like, if these authors are D&D players, or if, I don't know, I probably should do some research on how these books were born. If they, if they, like, base them off of actual D&D lore. Yeah. Um, obviously, the races and, like, the classes are very... I mean, it is Dungeons & Dragons branded. Yeah, no, it is it is straight up. It says D&D on the spine. Mm-hmm. And the back says Wizards of the Coast, Wizards of the Coast, which is the company that makes D&D. Now, so. when I first read this... Dungeons and Dragons was not on the cover. It just was Dragonlance, and it had a like very pretty like. Did so it have a so D they've... ampersand thing with a yes. dragon on it? It was D and D. Yeah, no, I know, but yeah. like, but it, they used to push the Dragonlance part of it a lot more than the D and D part of it. But and now... I think now that D and D is coming back, they're like, oh, we need to like make sure people know that this is D and D. Yeah. Um, but the characters are all super unique, and it's kind of funny as you watch them interact. You're like, oh, they rolled in that one for that. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> or oh they rolled a 20 <laughs> that's why that succeeded because uh-huh. it should not have um so that's kind of funny now that like reading it now after having done some rpg gaming um it's it's more fun to interact with the text i think mm-hmm. than it, than i even realized it could be as a kid when i first read it yeah so just really quick brief just going over like what actually happens in these chapters mm-hmm. other than meeting the characters. Um, I mean, a lot of it is meeting the characters. That's the purpose of it. They, yeah. It's it's kind of, they're doing the stereotypical meet in a tavern, you know? Yeah. That's how, that's like the stereotypical start to all D and D campaigns. Right. You meet in a tavern. Um, so that's pretty much what they've done. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's like an old guy that knew they would all be there and like set the place up. Mm-hmm. Um, but didn't really introduce himself to them, but he's no. clearly like orchestrating things. And also kind of an antagonizer. Yeah. <laughs> he caused 100%. a big upset once they all arrived and they had to get out of town. He's the Gandalf figure. Yeah. I don't know that he comes back 
I guess we'll have to see. Yeah. And I he's like the how lore master. In the, in the beginning, in the beginning, yeah, he's the he's the DM. Yeah. In the beginning, he uh, master, I guess. Yeah. Master. He, when he pops into the tavern to like get the place ready for everyone to show up, they're like, "Oh, you must be tired from climbing all those stairs." And he's like, "Huh?" And then he looks out. Oh yeah, all those stairs, quite the climb. He's like, "Yeah." This guy teleported in. He didn't climb stairs. <laughs> yeah. He's magical. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Yeah, we we basically, they all show up at a tavern, and we get to meet everyone. And then one of the, like, there's religious persecution happening. There's, like, pe- people being branded heretics. And this guy, the, the, the high theocrat, mm-hmm. is what he's called, is, like, the guy that runs things in town. And he was at the tavern, too. It, which my one, so mostly my notes are just, like, who characters are. But my one note about him is, the theocrat falls in the fire? Yikes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, it was really abrupt. Yeah, it was, it was really it was, sudden. It was like, a, and he tumbled over and went, went like head first into the fireplace. Mm-hmm. And he caught on fire. And he went out. He got himself out of it. His arms were flailing. He was on fire, Human Torch style. That's the nat one that I was referring to. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. like made an athletics check to see if, or a dexterity check to see if he could stay balanced and natural one into the fireplace. I wonder if they, like, yeah. rolled for these things as they wrote. <laughs> I mean, that'd be cool. I wonder, um, I follow them on Twitter. I'll see if maybe these are probably questions they've answered before. Maybe. We can look it up. Yeah. We can research next time. Yeah. But then the old man gives Tass, or Tasselhoff, which, by the way, Tasselhoff is such a and d name because it's Hasselhoff with a T. Yeah. Um, Tasselhoff. Tasselhoff. Um, but they give Tass, the old man gives Tass the staff that Goldman walked in with. And it, it heals the theocrat. And then and then the old man's like, there's the staff! Like, yep. <laughs> gets him into trouble. And But it was like, here, knock him over so we can smother the flames out. And gives him the staff to like whack him with to make him mm-hmm. fall down because he was just flailing. And mm-hmm. he whacks him with it. And the fire goes out and it heals him. Mm-hmm. So... <laughs> It's very amusing. Yes. That yes. whole sequence. But my, my favorite part mm. was um, Flint not wanting to go on the boat. <laughs> and, yeah. like, hearing about the drama of um, Flint and boats and almost drowning because Caraman, is that mm-hmm. his name? Like, almost accidentally drowning him in a previous adventure. <laughs> and then he almost drowns in this one. Again. Yeah. Well, because he's a dwarf wearing, like, dwarf armor. Mm-hmm. So, of course, he's not going to float. Right. So, yeah. yeah, it was very amusing because then they're running away from the goblins. Because for some reason, the goblins work for the high theocrat. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I I will admit that I am struggling with the setting. Of course you are. Right. So this is a known thing for me. Notorious. But can you also admit that it's a little confusing? It is. Okay. And it's I not got, just me. I had to use an audible credit to get the audiobook oh. of this one so that I could also listen to it because I tried reading the prologue in the first chapter and I definitely was falling asleep during the first chapter. But it was really late. Like, it's not because it was boring, but it, it right. was also just like my brain was not understanding, like, what the heck was happening. Yeah. But then I listened to it a second time, the first chapter, and then like listened to the second chapter and like read the third and fourth chapter and listened to the fifth chapter, I think. Yeah, I I kind of patchworked it, but it works. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it's reading. Yeah. So no gatekeeping here for audiobooks. Right. Um okay. But no, it's way different from Lies of Locke Lamora. Yes. Yes. Like the prose and the oh, yeah. like it the character, like the dialogue way different vibes. Mhm. But still good. Mhm. Just very different. Mhm. Um I can totally see why middle school me was like, yes, this is filling the Lord of the Rings sized hole in my yep. reading. Absolutely. List. So. Absolutely. I totally get that. Yeah, I really enjoyed the first five chapters, and it kind of ended on a 
kind of a cliffhanger. Well, they're in the boat sailing away from the city of the Haven. Were they in Haven? Mm-hmm. I think so. Or are they going to Haven? Um, hmm. Let me look. We should probably talk about Gold Moon a little bit, too. Yes, because these barbarians that they met in the tavern are... They were looking for that staff also, right? They are in possession of the staff. Well, now they are. They but have did been. The, did, oh, they, they had it from the beginning? Mm-hmm. Oh, see, I'm also struggling with some of the plot points. Um, I think that they are in... We also didn't... Okay, so the um, the end of the last home... That's the name of... It's like a big tree house in. Yeah, was not fancy, not like some she'd heard about in Haven. So in they're, Haven. They're, they're like outside of Haven. Okay. I think. They're enough to be considered like within Haven's jurisdiction. I believe so. So they were trying to leave it. The inn of the last home was built high in the branches of a mighty Valon wood tree, as was every other building in Solus. Oh, Solus. That's the name of the place they were in. That's that's the name. I remember that name. Uh, and I think Kryn is the name of the world. Yeah, that's right. Anyway. <laughs> um, right. So the barbarians. You yes. want to talk about the barbarians? Um, so Sturm helps them get to the inn, um, and they walk in with the staff. Um, and there's like, we find out from Gold Moon that she and her guardian um, are lovers, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's actually somehow it's revealed that she's a princess. Of the barbarians. She's like the chieftain's daughter. Yeah. And Riverwind is just a shepherd. Like he's yeah. nobody. <laughs> but also her bodyguard. Now. Because they've been exiled. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have the staff. Which I think they're trying to return somewhere. I had this prepared for last week, so I'm a little fuzzy on More rusty. It. Yeah. Because um, she sang a song mm-hmm. that was kind of about their current situation. Yeah. We also didn't talk about Tika, who is the barmaid that offers her home as a refuge when yeah. they're trying to run away. And you kind of camp out there for a little bit. Not very long. Because things just get for real a sketchy. Um, I love how they keep accidentally killing the goblins. Like, they're so low level. Yeah. Like, Tannis, act, like, one of them just runs into his sword. And he's like, I didn't want to kill you. I wanted to ask you questions. Yeah. You killed yourself on my sword. Yeah. And then... Cameron accidentally smashing their heads together too hard and killing them. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, you guys, these are goblins we're talking about. You gotta be gentle. There's the great knight Huma is mentioned, who's from the canticle. Paladine is the great god, or one of the gods. One, that was one of the ancient gods. The ancient god that isn't worshipped anymore. Mm-hmm. So we got... We got a couple of like lower dumpy things, yeah. Like just for just for world building, yeah. I, just what were they? What were they trying to do with the staff? Where were they going? So I'm looking at her um, poem, and the last or song, whatever. And the last stanza is: the staff flares in blue light, and both of them vanish. The grasslands are faded, and autumn is here. What is the okay? So our. <laughs> I'm sorry, I should have reread it. I really had like freshly read it last week before okay. we recorded our Hobbit podcast, and so now I'm Okay, so our heroes are meeting in a tavern. Tannis and Flint, before they get into the tavern, are accosted by goblins. Yes. And also uh, also Tass and is with them by then. Hoff is with them. Yeah. Yeah. But they're all meeting up because it's like the anniversary of something, but we don't really know what yet. I, I was just kind of under the impression that they just meet every five years because they're like yeah. a... It's like, it's like the college frat boys that are like, oh yeah, man, every five years we're going to meet up here in this in this bar and we're going to yeah. reminisce on the old times and, you know, talk about what we're up to. Like, that's kind of what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> but so they all meet up, they're missing one, and then the business with the theocrat happens because he notices that Goldmoon has the staff that he's after um, after he gets, well, cause she, the reason he gets pushed into the fire is because he tries to take the staff from her mm-hmm. and Riverwind pushes him 
because he's getting too close to Gold Moon. And then he falls into the fire. <laughs> like the push wasn't even strong. No, it was just like a, a nudge. It was a back off push. Yeah. But he was so drunk that he just flailed around and yeah. fell into the fireplace. Right. And then the old man somehow gets the staff from Gold Moon and handles it to task. And that whole business happens. And then yep. there's goblins everywhere. And they're running out the back of the... Um, also, the high theocrat, after he gets healed of his burns, decides to intentionally put his hand back in the fire to reburn it. Yeah, he's nuts. He is insane. Um, but th- So then Tika helps them go out like the back kitchen door, which drops them to like, the bottom of the tree. And they go to Tika's house, and then more goblins show up. That whole business happens. And then they decide they have to get out of Solus to regroup and figure out what their plan is. Yeah. And when they're So I don't know that we necessarily know that there's a... a, I don't think that they know, and I don't think that we necessarily know what the full plan is. What what the big overarching plot or, like, goal is. I think right now it's just survival mode. Yeah. And... So I think that's why we're struggling to figure out, like, what are they trying to do? Yeah. Because I don't think we know yet. Or it's just, it's very vague right now. Yeah. Um, Sorry, then, to rehash all that. I just need to go through it again yeah. in order to, like, figure out what... As, and as they're rowing away, they notice that constellations two are constellations are missing. Mm-hmm. Which were, one of them was a warrior, and the other one was a lady, right? Let me look. It was, like, the very last page of Chapter 5. Yeah. Um, the constellation known as the Queen of Darkness and the one called Valiant Warrior, yeah. both gone. She has come to Corinthianus, and he has come to fight her. All the evil rumors we have heard are true. War, death, destruction. Dun, dun, dun. Mm-hmm. That was Raceland. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking forward to see what happens. Ooh, Raceland also did some cool, like, magic thing, but it totally, like, zapped him. He totally cast Featherfall. <laughs> Featherfall is a and d spell. Where you just slow your falling, when he jumps oh. out of the, out of the tree, uh huh. Like when they're trying to leave the tavern, right. And he's like, I can get down myself. When his bro is like, I can carry you on my back, man. He's like, No. Yeah. I can do it myself. And then he just floats down, gently floats. Yeah. But fall. I mean, in the boat, he does like a, when they're dealing with the goblins. Oh, he, he like magic. He puts the and... goblins to sleep with magic. But it like messes them up. Yeah. He's not very strong. And he, like, didn't even care that arrows were landing yeah. two feet away from him. Yeah. Unfazed. No, there's something weird going on with him. He's the most intriguing, for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. I think he, like, did some deals with some... Uh, I think there's... This is why I want to know which order they're supposed to go in. Yeah. I think that he did some weird deals with some bad uh magical beings to get the powers that he currently possesses yeah but i'm i'm excited to see him pull more magic tricks yeah his brother caraman is kind of a himbo yeah for sure um and that was my recollection of him but i really like him even mm-hmm. though he's kind of dumb he's very well meaning Oh, yeah. Heart of gold. Yes. Where is it on his sleeve? Yeah. Obviously worried about his brother. A lot. With good reason. Mm -hmm. So it would seem. Yeah. I'm excited to see what happens next. It was kind of a... I mean, there was like inciting incident stuff, you know, Mm -hmm. like with what happened at the tavern with the high theocrat and them having to run away. And I'm just... It seems like these first five chapters were the setup chapters and now we're we are in the thick of it now we are yeah uh like i said the survival mode and also figuring out what is up with this staff like mm-hmm. i still have questions about that um i want to meet this other female character that was missing see how she comes into play later on like is she she's a mercenary so is she gonna get like pitted against the group oh and tanis is apparently in love with her oh yeah head over heels <laughs> Which is, yeah, interesting. But there's some weird, like, contention there because he's a half-elf. Yeah. So he's like, that's not going to end well because I'll live way longer. And she's human. So, yeah, there's some weird stuff there. 
Also, the barbarians are a little racist, and they're, like, trying to deal with that. Or the, the guy is. Because he is, like, not trusting of the non-human oh. members of the party. <laughs> right. Yes. So they're trying to work through some prejudice there. So there's a lot of, like, yeah. interesting group dynamics that I'm curious to read more into. Yeah. Who's your favorite character so far? Oh, boy. It's going to have to be a tie between Tasselhoff and Raceland. Oh. I think. Okay. Um, well, they're the most interesting to read. Yes. Because when Raceland's talking, it's usually pretty significant or entertaining because mm-hmm. he's just being angsty. Yeah. King of snark. He's super snarky, and <laughs> also, I want to see, like, you know there's the character, there's the token character that's like, this is kind of a trope for other things too, but it's it's like the quiet, reserved one that you know could, like, if they really wanted to, could do some serious damage if they mm-hmm. let loose, and yeah. that's totally him. Yes. And I can't wait for the moment where he actually lets loose on people, and, um, yeah, that'll be... An entertaining fight scene, I think. Yes. And um, Tasselhoff is the witty comic relief rogue. Yeah. Which is typical favorite character material. Yeah. So how about you? Do you want to guess who my favorite character is? Um, the main guy, the bearded half-elf, Aragorn. <laughs> yes. Your favorite character is Aragorn. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I'm also going into it with some prejudice from like remembering, like having read it previously. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember Tannis being my favorite character, but I also really enjoyed Tasselhoff. Yeah. Um, I like, and, he's also a trickster. I like, yes, the pranks. Um, and I know that there are, I'm pretty sure there are other characters coming that I like even more. Fair enough. I'm sure that's true. Um, but at this point, I think it's probably Tannis. Yeah. Because he is the Aragorn character. Of course. And very predictable. I also really very like Sturm. Consistent. Yes, I also really like Sturm. Oh, and gosh. I, and I, I mean, I truly, I like all of them for the most part. Like there's some that I'm like, eh, whatever. Those three are my top three. Sturm, Raceland, and Tasselhoff. They're my top three for sure. Yeah. I also really enjoy Raceland, but I also know things about Raceland. Uh, he's probably a bad guy. I don't know. And like, he's the kind of character. I'm not, no spoilers. That I would not be. I, I know you've read it before, but I'm just saying as someone who has not read it, I would be so not surprised if he turned out to be working with the bad guys. Do you or, know who he reminds me of? Uh, who? Saruman. Oh, I was going to say, like, Loki or something. Like yeah, some, that too. Yeah. Like a young Saruman, I mean. Yeah. Really focused on... Which I on... don't mean that as any kind of spoiler. I just no, mean I that know. as, like... Focused on power yeah. and getting more power. Yes. That's, like, his thing. Yeah. And I don't um, think he cares too much about where it comes from or how he gets it. Right. That's kind of the impression. He's very, very driven. Yes. And probably kind of a ends justify the means kind of person, which is why his body is so screwed up. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I also genuinely like Karaman. Mm-hmm. Um, Sturm is great. Um, Goldmoon is a character that I would maybe in the past have been like really interested in, but I, she feels very one dimensional at this point. Honestly, at this point, I could not care less about the barbarians. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I feel really bad about saying, like, maybe they become more important later on. But right now, yeah. it's like they, it's like the only reason they exist is to carry a stick around. Yeah. Like, they're only there because of the staff. And the staff is the right. actual thing that's important about them. So I, like... Yeah. Every scene where they're, like, talking to each other in their own language and stuff. And it's like, oh, will they come with or not? And I'm like... Just take the stick and leave them. I don't really care about them. Just right. let them do their own thing. They're already outcasts. They yeah. love each other. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Who cares? Totally fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I don't, those are, that's my current standing of characters. Mm-hmm. So. Fair enough. Yeah. 
but I, mean, I but I totally agree with your um, conclusion that Raceland is like the most interesting. Yeah, totally for sure. I mean, like I've read entire books that are centered around his storyline. Mm-hmm. So yes, I agree. He's a very interesting character. Mm-hmm. And trying to like imagine what someone would look like with hourglass shaped pupils is like real trippy. And like weird gold skin. Mm-hmm. And glowing gold eyes. Like yeah, he's. Mm-hmm. He's a little messed up. Yeah. And he's all like, he's way more thinner and like wraith like. Like yeah. And he gives like the other guys the heebie jeebies. Like yeah. Janice is like, I don't really want to look at you. I can't look at you. You look real weird. <laughs> but he kind of gets some kind of sick, uh, like satisfaction in weirding his friends out with yes. his new appearance. Do you think he considers them his friends? I think he considers them his brother's friends. Mm. yeah (laughs) yeah i don't i have no idea what he considers them to be other than his brother's friends that's fair i was just curious yeah that's kind of the vibe i get i see he's also the type that i wouldn't be surprised if he like backstabs people but like he also took this oath like he's still part of this group and i yeah so i don't know i don't know where his allegiances lie yeah he did seem really concerned that his sister wasn't there. Yeah. I kind of forgot that he was in this book, to be perfectly honest. Mm, fair. So, um, I was I think, pleasantly surprised when he showed up. I was like, oh yeah, the twins are in this book. Oh my gosh. He he definitely cares about his brother and his sister. Yes. But I don't, he definitely doesn't care about the rest of them as much. No, I don't think so. So, yeah, I don't know. Of, of like the three of them, he... I bet, like, when they were forming this group, he was probably the most reluctant of the three. And that's probably a fair assumption. We'll see where it goes. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Me too. I'm into it now. Good. It did take me a little bit. It took me longer to get into this than Liza Lacklamora, to be perfectly honest. But, because mm-hmm. um, something about, like, the, the witty banter and the characters in that one was very compelling right off the bat. But this one did get, like, now that we have the whole cast... I really, I'm really digging the, the dynamic of this whole group. And I like how big the cast is too now. Like it's a lot of characters to keep track of, mm-hmm. but I like all the different flavors. You yes. Know? It's, it's funny cool. because it, um, it totally makes sense to me that I read this like on the hinges of the Lord of the Rings and also on like Star Wars novels because yeah. like Star Wars novels are also kind of that way where they're working inside of a framework that already pre-existed. And they're just, like, introducing characters. And so you have the same kind of, like, slow start to some Star Wars books. Because it's, like, you have to figure out where you're at in the universe. Mm-hmm. And then so once you have that figured out, things get going. So I, we're, we are just, like, hitting the end of that, like, kind of awkward figuring it out exactly. part of it. And now it's going to start getting good, I yep. think. So. Yeah. And, I mean, considering that War of the Rings, you literally have to read, like, 300 pages before... No, it's not that many. You have to read a lot of pages before you get the whole cast together. Before it's the actual Fellowship of the Ring. Yes. <laughs> you get through the entire book one. Right. And it's not even the Fellowship of the Ring. how many pages that is? It's right behind you. We can find out. But, yeah, the, all of book one is just getting to Rivendell. And then... And then the fellowship gets together. At the well, Council you meet of you meet Strider on page two hundred and four oh, in this Lord. in this copy. <laughs> um, so that's our hobbits and our ranger. They spend a lot of time in and the Shire. And then the Council of Elrond, which we're gonna go to the end of that because they didn't really meet each other until like, or they didn't like figure out. Who they the weren't formed was. until the end of it. Mm-hmm. Three hundred and thirty six. Yeah. In this copy. Mm -hmm. so many pages before you get the whole cast together which if you lump all three of the books together it looks pretty proportional for like how long that's that chunk of intro you know that's true this is when things really get going yeah fun stuff (laughs) well so that was prologue through chapter five so what do we have to read for next time For next time, you're going to read chapters six through 11. Six through 11. I like how each chapter has a little bit of art at the top. Yeah, it's very cool. 
Yeah. Oh, and the and last... they're all titled. The last thing, I totally thought Flint was going to die based off of <laughs> chapter four. Yes. Chapter four's uh, title, or three's, one of their, uh, it was three. Chapter three's title description, Flint's Farewell. And mm -hmm. I thought, at first I was like, well, he's dead. Like, he's going to get shot by an arrow or something. And then it looked like that might actually happen. <laughs> Uh, I think that's but then he was fine. fine. Farewell to Flint. Arrows fly. Message in the stars. It's chapter five. Okay, five. Sorry. Yeah, yeah it's five. So. Um, yeah, I thought he was toast. I thought he was a goner. Fair. But he wasn't. So we're fine. All right. So that was it for this week. We look forward to talking more during the next read along segment of the Lit Round Table. Mm -hmm. But for now, happy reading. See you next time. Bye. Bye.